Hi, it's Tess, and today's tip is 441. I'm trying different times just to see what works out. Um, today, again, I'm still working with the one thing, so I'll put a post to that in the comments. And there's an article, not an article, a chapter. Again, I'm like, this is a business book, but I'm kind of equating it to my weight loss journey and seeing what kind of tips I can have to keep myself going forward. And he talks about the idea of big is bad. A lot of us get into this idea that if we shoot too big, we're gonna just fail. And I thought it was really interesting because I almost felt like Doc V wrote this chapter because he's been talking about that a lot with some of the goals that he's been reaching for. And maybe I'll, I'll put a link to one of his really good books in here too. But he was like talking about reaching big. And I thought what was really interesting is this article, again, I'm gonna say one small, hi Bonnie, good to see you. I am gonna still say, focus on one thing, which was a, a chapter earlier, focus on one thing, but don't limit your goal. Just focus on one thing as you're working towards your goal. And the reason is even for myself, um, because I started with such a high BMI, I didn't, I was actually only looking for 10 years, 10 years to enjoy my life. And through the process of being with Doc V, he reiterated to me, why is 10 years enough? So I was setting limiting beliefs based on my past experience, thinking that I could not achieve more. And it would have been tragic if I hadn't uh, stuck with it so that I could go long term. Good morning, good morning. And I'm so grateful that I did because what is becoming available to me is so much more than I ever dreamed possible. I almost felt like I was at the end of the door closing and it, right now I'm, I'm looking at the door opening before me. And I, I thought there were a lot of different analogies and thoughts that he put together here that were helpful. And I see someone else and I'm just not sure who it is. So hello and thank you for being here. Um, he kind of points out in this, again, we focus on one small thing to keep us, ourselves moving forward. But he kind of said, megaphobia is an irrational fear of big. And I know in my life, I've always been cautious and small, and I didn't want to take too many chances. Well, he kind of points out that had people not taken chances, we wouldn't be flying. We'd still think the earth was flat. We wouldn't have electricity. There were people that were told that what they were doing was wrong many, many, many times. And had they not continued to persevere and push through, things would be a lot different right now. Even technology, if you look at it in the past 30 years, uh, we jokingly say at one time it was floppy disks and it was cassettes and, well, even music, CDs, cassettes, um, DVDs. And now it's to a point where streaming, there are, there's a generation of people who probably are not familiar with the things that we used before. So what I thought was really, this is a quote directly out of the book, but what he said is, the idea of the word big is a placeholder for what you can call a leap of possibility. Now we still have to take focus and we still have to take one step at a time, but in myself, I'm not gonna narrow because at one time, I could have been pleased where my weight was when COVID entered, but at this point in time, I'm down 60, 70, who knows how much exactly, I'd have to go back and look. Uh, but I'm down enough weight that when I walked in the office, people would stop and say, I, I, I didn't even recognize you. So that made me feel really good because I was at a point in time in my weight loss journey that I shouldn't have been losing still. So what that tells me is it is all about our mindset and what we're trying to reach for. So I thought that idea of keeping my mind open that, that my, my possibilities are unlimited, which that's Zara Mahoon, unlimited possibilities. I just take a focus of one thing at a time so that I can get myself to that big goal. Um, he, he kind of points out that you have to go big in order to get extraordinary results. And hard work, is just simply hard work. Sometimes we attach labels to things that don't really uh, help us. Um, and he kind of did, again, pointed out this idea that if we, if we think smaller, what tends to happen is we put a ceiling on our accomplishments. And when we put a ceiling on our accomplishments, if we decide to go further, we've got to break through that ceiling. So if we just set the ceiling higher to start with, take those little focuses, we can get there and we don't have that and I, I'm going to call this kind of like what Doc V says. Many people get stuck at the 200 per heart mark. If, they're, if they've had to lose a lot of weight, they get stuck at the 200 mark because 
they almost felt they would never get there again. So they hang and they hang and they hang and they go up and they go down and they go up and they go down. So I'm going to say that based on what I'm reading and learning, they set a ceiling. And because they set a ceiling, now they've got to figure out, can they break through that ceiling or can they go all the way? And I think he is right. If we don't set that ceiling, we don't have to break through it. We can keep moving. He also mentioned another thing that was a really good analogy. I love analogies. And he was talking about a ladder. And he said, think about a ladder. A ladder has a narrow step because you're never meant to stay on it for any period of time. It's supposed to just be the thing that propels you to the next step, the next uh, focus item. Um, and again, I, I talk about focus items, but once you own something and it's a habit, it's part of your daily uh, life, that's when you reshift your focus to get, get something new. And that's how I've succeeded during COVID is that I just focused on one thing, owned it, and then once I owned it, I added a new thing to focus on, but just kept doing the thing that was routine. And that's what's helped me because in the past, I always would have the, uh, like everyone says, that last meal where you eat everything you could possibly eat and you think you're going to fall over and pass out. And then I would like jump in at 360 task items to do and I could never achieve it. It's the slow or it's the marathon, it's not the sprint. We have to do it long term. But I love that analogy of the ladder. The ladder is just set up to keep propelling you to the next point. And I love that idea um, because that allows us to keep moving forward. What he did mention that I didn't know that I thought was interesting is J.K. Rowling, who is, everybody knows Harry Potter, before she ever wrote the first book, she had seven years in her mind of what she wanted to put to paper. And while we all know the rest is history, she is, she, she, her life is an amazing story. And had she not thought big, she may have had been stuck with maybe one great book and had to try to break through that ceiling. She went big right from the get-go without even thinking it was a test. She just broke through and had the success that she's seen. And it just talks about the idea that jump, growth-minded people, oh, I, this is how he explained it. And this is really, and it made me realize something that I actually even did. Um, he says that when you're, like, when you're looking for people, there are people that are fixed mindsets where they're stuck where they're at right now, or they're growth mindsets, meaning that they're looking big, they want to get bigger, they want to learn more. And he, he came up with something I thought was really interesting. He said, like, if you were in a room with people, you can tell the growth mindset people just by asking a question or two. And I remember this, and I'll share an example. Um, he said that if you ask people to join in on something that is new or something they've never done before, if people him and ha and they'll think about it, send them materials, I'll look at it, I'll let you know later, they're in a fixed mindset. You're probably never going to get through to them. Now, if you have a growth mindset, that person's going to jump right in. And the reason I'm saying this is I did a Make-A-Wish 300-mile bicycle ride. But the catch to the story is I was at a gym. There were people that were training at the gym to be cyclists. I did not own a bike. I had taken a few spinning classes and I thought if I'm gonna have this new way of life work for me, I've just got to jump. Now, this is long before this book. So when they said, you want, you want to join? I'm like, yep, I'll join. They're like, you know, you've got four months and then it's gonna be a hundred miles on a bicycle a day for 30 days, three days. And I'm like, I've lost a hundred pounds, I can do it. Now, this is the first time I lost a hundred pounds and I was jumping into everything. I think I could have succeeded if I had had the mindset that I could do it. I was fighting for everything so that I could do it. So that jumping in was the right thing, but I didn't have the belief that I could do it. And that's where I messed up. I didn't believe in myself. And so I didn't have the gumption to keep pushing myself forward. But what's interesting is I jumped in, didn't own, a, didn't own a bike, started going on some training runs, and I completed that 300-mile bicycle ride. So it made me think about how many times in life have I hesitated because I do tend to be a fixed mindset that I want to have a growth mindset because the fixed mindset has the lower ceiling. The growth mindset has the bigger ceiling. And I just thought that was very interesting and definitely how I want to live life. I always say that I don't know if... I, I would have had some issues if I had gotten sick when everybody else was getting really sick had I been non-surgical.
But now I always say that because I've opened up so many doors, because my ceiling has gotten so many so much bigger because life has gotten so much more interesting, curious, excited, happy, joyful, that the Grim Reaper is going to have to chase me down because I'm not going easily. And I always joke, you know, anybody who wants to come with me, let's all go and let's make this, this life fun. And I think that is the way, is to adopt that growth mindset and look for something more to reach for. Because the fixed mindset limits the adventures, it limits the experiences, it limits the growth, and it limits the extraordinary things that you may be here to accomplish. Uh, he mentioned again, courage is, isn't absence of fear, it's the ability to move past the fear. Thinking big isn't the absence of doubts, it's moving past the doubts. So those are two big things I'm gonna kind of keep in my mind because this bigger life, these experiences, these people that I'm meeting, these things that I'm doing, these opportunities that are presenting have made this all worthwhile. I, I know I've said before that I was just looking for 10 years of life. I just wanted to gain 10 years where I wasn't watching from the sidelines. And the gift that I've gotten is a brand new opportunity to, to live life differently. And if that's something that you want, I would love to see you do that. We all, like they said, surround yourself with people that are reaching for more. And then you can follow in their path and get there a little bit easier. But again, think big, but focus on one thing to keep you moving towards that big picture. I'm going to end this with... The two statements that I think, I, if I was going to get a tattoo, I'd probably put these on. Courage isn't absence of fear, but moving past fear. Thinking big isn't the absence of doubt. It's moving past doubt. So my hope for you is that you move past fear and you move past doubt and you find those extraordinary experiences that are waiting for you. And leave, leave the Grim Reaper spinning in circles somewhere way back because he can't figure out where we are and his ceiling's too low to ever catch us anyway. So thank you for being here. Have a beautiful day. And we'll, anyone who's in Doc B's group, I'm going live in that group tonight. And anyone else, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks and have a great day.